welcome back on Plenary 2. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first two days of the web. This is unfortunately the last day. That's a little bit why we waited a little bit to uh, kickstart this, uh, this stage today. I hope you don't mind if we have this uh, 15 minutes or something um, change in the schedule. We will directly start with a, a new panel um, by Facebook called the Mobile Growth um, with some local startups demo and an active discussion on how uh, to use mobile as a growth engine. Um, we have three startups that we will present uh, during this panel moderated by Amina Belgiti, who is uh, the head of uh, plat platform partnerships for Facebook EMEA. And we have three founders, Cedric Hutchings, the CEO, CEO of Three Things. You might have seen him on the main stage. And so Cedric Hutchings, Jean-Baptiste Hiron, the CEO of Ijijing, and Antoine Lévesque, co-founder and CMO of UMAG. Amina, stage Thank is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me on stage. And thanks to everyone for waking up bright and early uh, to be with us for this panel. So I'm thrilled to be here uh, with really what I think is the next wave of um, social mobile innovators. Um, yesterday, we had a panel with um, Deezer and Endemondo and Shazam, and I really think that these guys that are on stage with me are the ones to watch. So we'll talk a little bit about what they've built, their experience building on the Facebook platform, building first a great service and then integrating it with the Facebook platform. Um, and I think that in six months' time and in a year's time, these guys will be huge. So that's my bet. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm excited to showcase you guys. Um, what I'll do before we actually pass it over to each of the panelists to talk about their business and what they've done with us, um, just a few key stats to think about. The first is 600 million. That's the number of users that actually come and use Facebook mobile every month. Second stat, 200,000 applications. So that's the number of iOS and Android apps that have actually integrated with Facebook. And then the last piece, which I'm very excited about, and that is that Paris is the number two city um, after San Francisco in terms of open graph submissions. Um, people ask us why. I think you are the reason why. It's because we're seeing this kind of innovation out of Paris. Um, so we're really excited to hear what you have to say. Um, what I would ask you all to do when Cédric comes up and presents, and then Jean-Baptiste and Antoine, is listen out for two specific things. One is, how do you actually get your application discovered? That's really the most important question. How do you get it discovered? followed by how do you actually get people to come back to your service. So our founders will actually step up, present their, um, their applications and what they've integrated, and then we'll come back down and ask some questions. So, Cédric, do you want to get us started? Thank you very much, Amina. Thanks for the invitation. So, I'll step up. So, um, does it work here? No. So I need to hold. So good morning, everybody. So I'm uh, representing uh, Whitings. I'm a co-founder uh, of this French company who started, and we think we pioneered the Internet of Things, the, terms, uh, the theme of today, uh, when we launched uh, our first product three years ago, uh, which was a Wi-Fi body scale. And we are now one of the leaders in the uh, space of connected health and wellness. And I will show you in a, in a few minutes what we have done to extend the experience on, of our connected device along with uh, Facebook and specifically uh, Open Graph applications. Yeah, thank you. So uh, what I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, here is that so so for Sable, what, what we try to do is turn up, turn your well-being. So with a, a range of uh, connected health sensors, a body scale, a smart blood pressure monitor, a smart kit scale, and a, a range of device, uh, we are building indicators that are updating automatically, and you retrieve in, uh, in your application, so in your, in your pocket, and it helps you to understand where you stand in terms of your health, but also what's the best path to improve your health. And we generate call to action, small objectives, because we think that uh, it's the accumulation of small objectives and achievements that helps you reach your goal in the long term. 
And to achieve this uh, small step objective, we think that we can get, uh, and our user thinks and have uh, uh, asked us to develop this feature, we can get extra motivation from our, our friends. So uh, this uh, screenshot display our, uh, the dashboard of our, our, of our application that indicates uh, your weight trend, your blood pressure monitor, but also your activity level, uh, a sense of your sleep quality with additional sensors. Uh, so you have very simple uh, indicators. And here I, I will show, and in a minute I will demonstrate what we do with, with Facebook. Uh, when we talk about uh, getting help from your friends, we are talking about what we call social uh, pressure, uh, positive social pressure, sorry. The idea is that uh, you are setting a goal and you want to be accountable uh, among your friends that will help you, who will help you uh, reach this goal by providing you some feedback along your efforts or your lack of efforts. So let me switch uh, directly to, the, to our apps. So here you have a, a summary of how I've been standing along key dimensions, uh, which are you know, my weight and how I manage my weight, but also how active I am, uh, how I uh, manage and take care of my heart, and, and how do I sleep, actually. So this uh, very simple bi butterfly snapshot is generated from this uh, graph. So you see my graphs. Uh, I just step on the scale this morning, and you see that my latest, latest weight, uh, but also my blood pressure monitor again, and the way I consume calorie, energy, and, and my sleep time. So a lot of information in this uh, unified in this single app. Uh, here, in, the, in this space, uh, it's just an example on how we can set objectives. So I can have a desired weight in the long term, so next March of, uh, of 70 kilos. But I will start with small steps. So let me uh, just reactivate. So I'll start with small steps and, and say, OK, this week's, and we think it's the best way to achieve it, I'm going to lose one kilos. But I, I would like to get and retrieve some help from my friends, so I will, I will you know, add, uh, get motivation, set this goal. And by setting this goal, I have chosen to share it automatically. Let me just update the numbers. Automatically on my Facebook application. And you, you see that I did just uh, update my status. Oh, sorry. Uh, as you see here, using the Open Graph application, I set this objective, display it on, on my status, and now every likes or even comments from my friend will be directly retrieved from the Facebook app and for the, from the Open Graph and display back into my application. So I can, I can get, again, some extra, uh, extra motivation. So we've just started here with uh, setting a goal weight, uh, but what we have in front of us is deploying all these kind of objectives. We all know, know what's good in general for us, but we rarely act on it. So uh, we are working right now on, on a, a much more granularity with Facebook on setting very small step objectives on my behavior during the day and getting some help from my friends. So thanks for, the, uh, for your attention. Excellent. Thank you, Cedric. This is great stuff. Um, so next up, Jean-Baptiste, who will actually be joined uh, by his CTO, Charles-Marie, who should be coming up to talk a little bit about music. So we're, we're shifting gears here. We started with a lifestyle app that really talks about your health, um, and it's what you're passionate about and what you want to share. We're now going to talk about um, DJing and specifically mixing. So Jean-Baptiste, take it away. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste Thiron. I'm the CEO of DJ IT, and as you can uh, obviously hear, I'm French. Uh, Digit is the startup I launched while, while I was still a student in aeronautics. Okay, uh, I know it's strange. But uh, our core business today is to develop innovative music applications, uh, especially we developed Edging, the world's first social DJ app. So um, about editing, uh, it's the, a very innovative music application because we are the first to offer a mobile music tool that enables you to both create and share your own music. Espe basically, um, uh, we, we enable users to create their own mix 
and then share them directly on Facebook, Twitter, and edging.com. Other things uh, about our business model. We have a very innovative business model because we are... Oh, sorry for the, for the slide. Sorry. <laughs> I've forgotten the... We have a very innovative business model because we bet on a freemium model. We are the first creation tool to integrate a virtual currency directly in the app to enable users to buy uh, additional features. But we have, um, in addition, more um, uh, sources of revenue like um, advertisements and uh, affiliations. So about figures. Edging is found uh, in 140 countries and we reach more than 2 million downloads and 600 subscriptions within six months, just on iPhone, the iPhone version, because the application is available on, on iPad and Android since a few weeks ago. So, how did we achieve this big growth? Thanks to our social strategy, because at Edging, we truly believe that in the, in, in the power of social networks to broadcast an app. So um, we capitalized on Facebook Open Graph to improve and uh, optimize our social cycle within edging. And that's I, I'd like to tell, to tell you about today. So we met Facebook team a few weeks ago and uh, we worked together with, with the amazing Facebook team to build the best user experience and to loop the loop of the social cycle within eDigging to create the first social DJ app. So it's very simple. Here is how we do it. We use um, different kinds of actions, like when a people is mixing um, his, uh, his party, we, we, we push different kind of action with the open graph, like uh, Charles is mixing, or a child recorded a mix, uh, Charles uh, discover a mix, and, uh, and, and other actions that create themselves other similar action on the uh, open graph. This way, we create a virtuous social cycle. And all in all, since we integrate Facebook in our app with the open graph, we multiplied our reach by 10. That's very huge, and uh, it's like free advertisement because you have uh, an organic uh, users which come to your app uh, for free. And uh, as you can see on, uh, on this graph, sorry, as you can see on this graph, our total um, aggregation activity um, show an exponential uh, growth. Um, another thing I would like to tell you about today is uh, about downloads, because we, we recently test the new Facebook format, ad format, named uh, Facebook App Install Mobile Ads. The result was pretty satisfying, because since we managed to, to, to pay or install less than 50 cents euros for each install. So it's a very, very interesting format. And um, using our experience, thanks to the Facebook Open Graph, uh, for example, one install, uh, one install you pay, then generates uh, 1.25 more times downloads, uh, which, with, with, um, which um, uh, th than it would, it would be without. So, um, of course, we strongly recommend you to integrate Facebook strategy in your development. And uh, to conclude, uh, we will launch um, a communication plan on the 10th of December. So save the date, and we, 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 you will see in real time the evolution of edging. Thank you very much for your attention. Good, thank you. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Would have wanted to hear some music. Maybe we can do that uh, afterwards. I'd love to hear a mix, but um, we'll, uh, we'll try to do that afterwards. So next up is Antoine. Antoine, um, heads up UMAG. Um, so we're switching to yet another category. We've gone from uh, fitness to uh, music and now into news and publishing. So Antoine, go ahead. Yes, thanks. So if I can get the deck. Oh, yes. Useful. 
So uh, before we get started, a quick word on UMAG. UMAG is a digital magazine that has uh, aggregating uh, 5,000 sources on 50,000 topics. Uh, it's on iPhone, iPad, Android, and the web. And the unique thing about UMAG is that um, we have uh, human beings working there. I mean, a team of human, uh, a, a human layer on top of the algorithm and the machines, so that actually give um, uh, a touch of editorialization to, uh, to this brutal world of uh, aggregation. Uh, and, and it's very important because we create our own content as an aggregator. That's why we exist on the web. Uh, and ultimately, our audience model is SEO and SMO. And within that context, SMO, we've been trying and testing nice little tricks, uh, leveraging the uh, Facebook Open Graph, like this one I wanted to share with you. Uh, so say I'm reading this press review on uh, Gangnam Style, for the sake of this presentation, and I see um, a picture of a friend of mine popping up on the top of the screen. As you can see, a little picture. Uh, it's a real friend of mine. And when I click on it, I have a bunch of friends, uh, one or several friends, and it says, your friend, I mean, these friends might be interested in reading this press review, this piece of news. So um, it doesn't seem fantastic like this, but how do we get it right? Because that's the point. You can't just say, your, these friends could be interested and get it wrong. So how do we get it right? You have to imagine that behind the scenes at UMAG, we have a team of documentalists carefully matching the topics in our classification that's 50,000 of them, but we don't do them all, of course, uh, with corresponding objects in the social graph. So for Gangnam Style, for Psi, for instance, this is an entry in people uh, uh, in my classification, and I have perhaps like four or five social objects, which are fan pages, aggregating four million fans. So at the end of the day, um, I do have a right match, because these friends, they have like the Facebook uh, Gangnam Style, or one of the Facebook Gangnam Style pages. At the end of the day, I do have perhaps less interactions, right, because this is taking room of screen, this is taking surface, um, and also I don't always have a match. But when I have a match, this is way more targeted and way more qualitative, because these actions, they happen on objects that I make rich. Rich objects because I have attached a topic, an author, a source, friends, and so on and so forth. As many information I can to turn it um, uh, rich. And therefore, that in turn creates engaging stories in the news feed. And they are visible to the, to, the, to the UMAG users and to their friends. And because the last thing I want is that these interactions, they end up in the live ticker, where, I'm, I'm not, where, where this is not going to help me generate traffic on UMAG. So it's very important to boost your age rank with rich actions that are targeted um, and, and very qualitative. And before we're so successful, and until we are so successful at generating um, uh, SEO and SMO traffic at such a large scale, uh, I'm afraid I have to confess I'm still buying my audience, uh, but I'm lucky enough to be uh, trying and uh, using the Facebook mobile advertising uh, products. You know, we've been, we've been trying about every single solution out there on the market. Uh, well, the app boosters, what I call the app boosters, are these, uh, these big uh, list of... Um, uh, app maniac people that love downloading uh, application but are obviously uh, not very um, very loyal to your app. Premium news app that are the the key applications of the of our segment, which are the news. They are quite expensive to poach because you you, you hardly you you know you, you get a hard time at convincing someone that's been reading an app. Uh, of a famous publisher to turn to UMAG after four years is quite difficult. So, but when you do so, you have a good retention rate. The ad networks, which I won't name, um, that provide a huge reach at a very cheap cost and, a, uh, and, and, and of very cheap quality as well. And at the end of the day, we found out that Facebook was um, a pretty good balance for us, at a pretty good mix between uh, a cost per install, which is uh, 1.20 euros across, uh, across the board for iPhone, iPad, uh, Android. Of course, you have some uh, differences, but I'm not going to extend on that. So a mix of a, a decent cost per install, a, a good retention rate at 34% after one month of usage, and also reach. And reach is very key. I mean, you, you have a huge reach on Facebook. You're not limited as you could be with premium news app or uh, app boosters. Well, that was the, uh, the point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antoine. All right. <clears throat> so we have now heard from all three uh, of our panelists in terms of describing what they've done with Facebook, what's worked. What I'm going to do now is um, have a bit of a conversation with each of you 
around um, what you're currently doing, the success that you're seeing, and what you're looking for next. So I'll start with you, Cédric. Um, and specifically, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the thinking behind um, building this companion app, right? So, you know, Withings is very famous for the scales and for the baby monitors and the devices themselves. Help me understand the rationale behind the actual companion app and then how you came to Facebook. Yeah, thanks. Sure. So, so first, uh, what we are trying to do is, is to provide an experience that drives uh, behavioral change uh, for better health. Uh, and we think there are, there are some key points here. One, one is to uh, not have to change anything in your daily life to capture the information. These indicators that we build in our application, in the health companions, are updated through simple and natural gesture on your daily life. That's the very first point. So we worked hard on really connecting uh, our range of device directly and feeding in the, in the application. Second, again, once you get these indicators, uh, you get a lot of opportunity to drive motivation on, on small objectives. And uh, it was very natural for us to bring this uh, uh, social pre pressure and, and positive social pressure. And in fact, w when we think about this mechanism, it did not start with Facebook. Uh, everybody has an experience of uh, a positive social pressure, be it in, uh, in the garden, uh, in the, at school, when you, uh, you know, uh, yell an objective uh, and you, you, you will be accountable, or in the coffee, near the coffee machine where you announce that you will train for the next marathon. When you say it, you know that you will be recalled that you set this objective, and it will impact your, your motivation. So it was a very natural uh, feature to add in our apps that, again, we worked hard to make it very motivational. So it, this extension uh, in, in Facebook, uh, for us, bring a feature in our application first. And it's that, that's the very first value. Second, obviously, and I think like many, uh, like all of us here, it's a way to engage and enlarge our community. Uh, but uh, for us, so meanings that uh, uh, make our application and product discovered by the networks of uh, our user. Uh, but again, here, I think with uh, some specific for why things is that we want to show through our application and through the action uh, that our posts uh, on your social network, that uh, we impact and we have result on the on the health. So uh, what you will see is on the on the social network is not only I set an objective, but you know some very simple quants about how you reach your objective and how you you have been better uh, using our apps. And that's what we want to make visible through the open graph. That makes a lot of sense. And so re-engagement, it sounds like, is really sort of the key. There were some natural interactions that were taking place offline. Um, you've enabled them in a very natural way, um, and that helps with, with re-engagement. That makes a lot of sense. Great. Um, Jean-Baptiste, a quick question for you about um, how you think about social um, and what social means for your business overall, right? You, unfortunately, we, we, didn't, we weren't able to see um, the, the demo, but could you talk us through sort of what aspects are social in terms of, you know, mixing and what you're actually able to share with your friends? Yes, um, it was a, a very big challenge for us to, to innovate in mixing experience because um, there is a lot of uh, kind of software or application, especially on the Apple Store, there is a lot of DJ app. And we must find a very innovative idea to, to create um, a, a new trend uh, with our, our, our customers. And we, we decided to, to create the first world social DJ app. And um, uh, for us, social is very important because uh, we, we are a very young startup and we want to, to, to grow up very, very fast. And um, with the, thanks to, to Facebook Open Graph and Facebook uh, the Social Network, uh, we, we have a, a very big advance uh, against our competitors with this, this strategy. So social is uh, like the heart of our um, strategy in general. That sounds good. Thanks. Antoine, um, could you speak to us a little bit about what your metrics, um, when you think about you know, the integration that you've done and what you're working on going forward, um, what are some of the things that you think about as being the key success metrics? Well, I, I really take the social approach um, uh, as, as, a, as part of as a, as a more a general strategy. You know, I say that our audience model is SEO and SMO. So basically, the metrics that I have is that when, I, when, I, uh, when my editorial team decides to write a press review, because our job is to aggregate content and then write press reviews on these, like Quick News Digest, 
So they're, they're always going to spend at least, for the shortest press review, 20 minutes with the help of the algorithm and, and, and so on and so forth. And the thing is, my metric is very simple, is how, many, how much traffic, organic traffic, what I call free traffic, do I get from writing this piece of news? Knowing that some, piece of, some pieces of news are never going to circulate on the social networks. For instance, we did uh, news uh, for, uh, in the DIY category. I mean, no one wants to, sh no one wants to share that, but it's it's a big, you know, uh, middle tail on on Google. And on the other hand, you have like uh, this piece of news of this um, motorbike guy who fell into uh, who fell into um, uh, into the water, and and that really went wild on the social network. So, at the end of the day, I look at the total impact of organic traffic, uh, and, and 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 I manage my editorial team to make sure that at least for each piece of news, I get at least. 2,500 unique uh, visitors, new unique visitors uh, to my site. That's my key metric. And then it depends on the, on the topic, uh, if it's more SEO oriented or uh, more uh, social, obviously. That makes sense. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you think about these metrics in the context of your business model and specifically some of the um, formats, ad formats that we were talking about earlier? Can you kind of help us connect the dots? Um, so we've, we've, been, uh, we've been running campaigns that combine uh, the app in style. Uh, and, uh, and, and we combine it with um, uh, sponsored ads. Uh, and we, we, we found that the, the two work very well because App Install is, is very famous now, so you're capped, so you lack reach. So we added the sponsored ads uh, to, to boost reach. We did, and, and, and then it's down to lots of little tricks like uh, we, we, these sponsored ads, I mean, we, you, post a, you do a Facebook post of your uh, iOS app, so it shows your logo. Right, because that's what it detects from the uh, from the app store, and then you you have again your brand logo of, of your app, so it's two times the same logo. And we found that if you change one of the two logos, the impact is huge. So that's why if you go to our um, um, if you go to our page, our logo is multicolor. It has four colors, and the fact that there is this logo at four colors and the, and the, and the red logo uh, really really stands out more on the page and clicks like twice as much uh, as more. You also found that you know what we do is we, we, we do posts and we, we, we quote the people and the reviews they left on the Play Store and on the App Store. And we found that if you if you quote a name that's not understandable, like you know, lots of people they have names like uh, with letters and numbers that are you know like pseudo names, right? If you put uh, quotes by names that are strange and not easy to read, it doesn't work. So if you replace it with Nicolas or Sebastian or Hugo, which are very common names in France, it's, uh, it's, you know, it clicks twice, twice, as, twice as much. So it's lots of this, first is combining the two, which give us reach and visibility, and then it's lots of little tricks like this, perhaps uh, 10 different tricks to uh, improve it and make it work. And I think the help of, uh, of the team in Dublin uh, and of Charles was, was really huge to understand all this and to, uh, and to progress and one day after another uh, to, to come up with these tricks and analyze it and, and see if it works. Yeah, it's, it's all about iteration. Um, Cédric, back to you. Could you tell us a little bit about who your users are? Um, and specifically, I understand that you actually have significant growth and significant uh, base of users in the US internationally. So can you tell us a little bit about who they are, where they are, and how you scaled internationally as effectively as you have? Uh, yeah, thanks. thank you. So, uh, in fact, so uh, uh, during these three years, we have scaled quite significantly uh, internationally. Uh, we are still selling products. So, uh, our first metric is, is uh, our base of users of uh, our products, uh, who are now uh, located in more than 50 countries. Uh, we make more uh, half uh, of our sales in, in the U.S. So, uh, I think. What I would like to share here is that uh, when we grow uh, internationally, uh, but we are building product and application, we are very specific challenge uh, to overcome. Uh, because again, it's not about deploying an application only, but a product. So in, apart from getting the product in all this region, is uh, to adapt this project, product for each of the market, for different feature regulation, etc. But the good thing here, and we are talking about the internet of things, is that we are bringing a lot of capacity that are belong uh, to the digital world back in the product. We can adapt our product remotely based on geolocalization. And that's what we do uh, very uh, daily. Uh, when we are selling our product in Japan, uh, we have to comply with specific rules. But when the user is opening the box of uh, our body scale and connect it to the application, it's geolocalized and the software is updated uh, to comply with these rules. It's enabled us 
not to uh, have a very complex supply chain thanks to this connected aspect of our device and application. So that's one of the features we bring from the app world. Mm -hmm. The other is that, of course, all of our devices are updating op automatically without having the end user to care about it. So uh, during the night, when we know the product is not uh, uh, used most of the time, um, we can update it, change the update features, the fix bugs, etc. Interesting. And could you speak a little bit to um, sort of what we should expect from you over the next six months? Um, I know you've been hard at work on a variety of different things. The companion app um, that's been integrated with Facebook is one of them. Can you tell us what to expect in the next six months and then maybe a year's time if we were to come back to the web next year, what could we hear from you guys? Sure. So, so uh, our next, very next uh, event for us is a consumer electronic show. So we will be uh, showcasing uh, uh, very new products. Uh, that, so please stay tuned for, uh, for early January. Uh, January 6, actually, to, uh, for our new product announcement in this range of uh, health and wellness uh, sensors. Uh, but in the, in the midterm, where we, we know we have a lot of work to do uh, is in terms of developing the social network aspect of our apps, bringing your community back into your, our app experience. And we'll see very new features in, in the next month uh, in our application and platform on this part. That sounds really good. Um, Jean-Baptiste, quick question for you on, um, again, similar to what I asked Cédric, what do you see um, for EDJing in the next six months? Um, and then again, if we were to all come back here next year, what could we actually say about what you've done? Okay, so uh, I think the next six months uh, will be very, very, we, we were very, very busy. Uh, we, we must um, uh, develop a lot of things. Um, we must, we must um, uh, optimize our business model, which is based on a freemium model. As, uh, as I, I told you, uh, we, we sell new features in the app, and there is a lot of developments about new features in uh, our company. We must um, develop uh, editing for new platform. We are just available on uh, Google, Google Play and uh, Android market, because um, um, we have a lot of uh, marketing uh, business and um, a lot of uh, development. So um, we we hope that um, our um, mechanism, our mechanism, our social mechanism, uh, will be um, not too big growth because uh, we were totally too busy. Uh, and um, and in one year we don't know exactly. Um, where we where, where we will be because uh, in February DJing uh, doesn't exist and six months later we have more than two million installs and six hundred thousand subscriptions and we will pass the one million maybe at the end of this year so uh, we don't know but uh, we have all my team are very very um, um, uh, exciting about this and uh, we will see where excellent. That sounds really good. Um, Antoine, a uh, question for you about what you see as the biggest opportunity uh, ahead for UMAG, um, and then also what you see perhaps as the biggest challenge going forward. Uh, yeah, opportunities are always big challenges, otherwise it wouldn't be opportunities. So in, in my case, it, it is both. Uh, we are moving, right now we, are, uh, we, we offer uh, online press and the blogosphere within UMAG, and uh, what we're doing is we are signing deals with publishers to sell um, um, content from the offline world. So basically the, the, the magazines and the newspapers you find at the news agent, we, uh, we are in the process of selling these uh, on a per article basis as well as on a per issue basis. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's both a huge opportunity because we would become the first um, uh, freemium kiosk uh, or freemium newsstand, if I can say so, because you come and read what you want. And then if you want to go further, as you are presented with the opportunity to do so by the editorial team and the press review and all that, you can buy articles from the offline world that are um, uh, represented and relayouted to fit a mobile device. So that's huge. But on the other hand, because uh, no one does this uh, this way, um, publishers, some of them are very excited, and some of them are, um, uh, you know, more uh, conservative, uh, to say the least, and uh, and are seeing this uh, as uh, perhaps something too new to do it now. Uh, and uh, so it's it's we've been working on the case for a year now, and uh, it's taking a lot of time, but we'll uh, we'll manage as we have signed our first uh, deals with uh, publishers. 
That sounds good. Um, one other uh, question for all three of you, um, and that is, as you guys think about um, Facebook and the way that you've built on the Facebook platform, tell me, you know, if you had a wish list uh, for Facebook, either in terms of product or just generally, what would be at the top of the list? What would you want from us for Christmas, let's say? <laughs> Silly, do you want to start? Uh, yes, uh, so we've been uh, working now for um, a few weeks with the, the Facebook team and very thrilled uh, with the co collaboration. Uh, I, I think, you know, what, what's uh, in the next week ahead and, and months, uh, we have to build together the right model and action in this health and fitness space. Um, there, there, there have been a, a lot of, uh, I should say, trial and error or, or tuning uh, when we talk about frictionless uh, action uh, with the open graphs. Uh, and, and where we, we want to cater collaborate and, and we want to share uh, the expertise is uh, to find areas uh, where um, the sharing of an action again create a value and benefit for the application uh, and not only focus on the on the engagement on re-engagement because at the end of the day it's what what is about is for us is create value for for our users so you know m my wish is uh, that we we can you know keep on working on this uh, on this goal and I think we are very much aligned because it makes sense for for Facebook Facebook as well. Jean-Baptiste, what's at the top of your list? Uh, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, it's maybe like like you. Uh, we nowadays we we have a lot of organic users um, which uh, comes to to us thanks to Facebook and uh, Facebook Open Graph and our strategy. But um, we, I think we you need a. Um, some some help maybe about um, how to monetize this huge audience. Mm -hmm. uh, EDGing it's like ten ten hundred uh, ten ten thousand new subscription each day, and uh, I think it will uh, grow up uh, faster uh, in the in few weeks. So um, how to monetize uh, this audience? So I think it's a very good, um, very good point, and uh, I think every developer have this, sees these problems. So um, if you can help us about the, the reflection around uh, this pro this problem, it's not a problem, but this problem, mm -hmm. I think um, it's, uh, it, will, it will be very great. Okay, monetization, Antoine. Uh, I can just ask anything, as you said. I can just within reason. <laughs> uh, within reason. So, um, so using the thumb up, uh, the exact same as yours in our application is not within reason, because it works so well. You know, why can't we use it? No, I'm joking. So I, I knew it was a forbidden question, but I asked it anyway. Uh, no, I would have one request. For, for seriously, is uh, give this application space that you have uh, more more visibility. Right now, it's just a little menu out there and. Uh, if, uh, of course, uh, some of your friends have interaction with the app, it may come up in the news feed with all the challenges of the age rank, obviously. But give it more room, you know, give it more room, make it more visible to the users. If you want to take the lead from the other players that I won't be naming here, but give it more room. And within that, uh, give the opportunity to, uh, to be visible. Why not sponsor your visibility, you know, help uh, publishers uh, merchandise their presence in there. Uh, right now, it's just um, too conservative, too wise, you know? Uh, take the lead and uh, make it big. It's a, it's a big uh, part on the value chain, so you should occupy this as well. Interesting. Okay, so more stuff around App Center. Sounds good. Um, so just to close off, I'm going to ask a few quick questions um, to all three of you. So I'll go ahead and ask the questions, one or two word answers, um, just to give a feel for kind of where you guys are. So the first one is a prediction, um, and that is outside of your category, what do you think will be the big breakout mobile social category next year? Cedric. Uh, yeah, so uh, outside of the health and, uh, yeah. and fitness, which um, for me is the next big thing in, in, this, uh, in this application, yeah. uh, for sure the music application and like the, the one which we see uh, today is, uh, is really thriving, uh, not only as a music, as a consumer of the music, but as a creator and you know, contributor of, uh, of music content like we, we just see here. So I'm very convinced on this space. That sounds good. Antoine. Um, to me, it's quite straightforward. The, um, the Airbnb kind of style, Airbnb of food like Cedric does, Airbnb of uh, uh, cars, Airbnb of everything, basically. I think it's going to be the big 2013 boulevard. Excellent. Jean-Baptiste? Uh, 
I think uh, we will see a big uh, change in uh, the utility uh, category, like uh, within, for example, uh, with this app, um, Material is uh, a virtual social uh, connection uh, you, you create uh, to the real world. So you have a virtual interaction on the web and there is um, a, a real connection with the real world. So I think uh, all of this uh, utility app uh, will um, have a very big growth with, um, in the, the next, next year. And um, I think it's a very nice uh, category. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. It seems like uh, there's a lot of interest in each other's apps, which is, uh, which is also great to hear. Um, what startup do you most admire at the moment? Anyone can start. For me, it's in the music category. Uh, it's not a mixing app, but uh, it's a blind test music app. It's Songpop. Because um, they, they understood uh, every rules, every mechanism of m music discovering sharing. It's perfect. It's, uh, the, it's like an oral star at, at work. So. Okay. Song Fa, that sounds And they're good. French. <laughs> they are indeed, and we know them well, yep. Um, there is a startup that really impressed me uh, in my categories. It's, it's an app called Sumly. Uh, it's, uh, it's a young bloke that's 16 years old in, in the UK who created that. And uh, I mean, he, he, he really is forward thinking. He's got some great ideas, and he's really like a apart from the crowd somehow. I don't know where, what it will go. Uh, he raised money at 16 years old uh, from venture capitalist. So uh, I think that's, that's impressive, you know, and knowing the, the challenges of uh, my category, uh, I, I'm just like, wow. Very cool. Cédric, startup you admire most. Uh, so uh, actually, so in the... In, uh, in <laughs> So it will be uh, in, in utility. So um, there are a company called Smart Impulse, so very young company, uh, you know, just kids out of school, enjoying school here in France. And uh, they really came up with a very innovative solution uh, to understand your energy electrical consumption uh, at home. Uh, in the way the ear, the human ear can, you know, discriminate different music instruments just by plugging one box and not, you know, a lot of uh, changing your whole uh, room, uh, home, just one one box at home to understand all uh, the source of consumption of your energy and then of course to act on it, monitor it and I think they came up with something very new, very uh, breakthrough innovation and we will hear from them in the next, uh, in the next months and years. Excellent. Sounds good. Last question um, and that is what two apps do you use most frequently? Well, uh, um, Excluding yours. Of course, of course. I don't use it, actually. Uh, <laughs> I use uh, Airbnb uh, every day, and I think it's just great. Um, and uh, also use uh, Path, uh, a social network uh, app as well, on a daily basis. Uh, for me, it's very um, basic. It's on my home screen. Uh, it's Ever Evernote, Dropbox, and a new one, uh, which is Feedly. A, a, a competitor. How, how can you say that? I mean, you know. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember. But um, you, your mag is good too. Excellent. Sounds good. Cédric? Uh, so I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. So I use uh, quite often uh, Yammer uh, because it, we use these networks uh, in the company uh, very actively. And, and um, I'm a daily user of Spotify as well. Well, panelists, thank you very much um, for being here, for presenting Thanks. your work and the great work that you've done. Thank you to the audience for uh, being here bright and early. And um, thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.